This is the Uptick Newswire Stock Day Podcast, sponsored by InvestorsHangout.com and Equities.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes and YouTube to stay up to date on penny stock news and interviews, public information on OTC, pink sheets, and microcap stocks from around the world with your host, Everett Jolly. On today's show, I'm bringing you a brand new company, and I'll tell you what, I'm really excited to find out what this company is all about and how they're going to change the world. Acacia Diversified Holdings Inc., they trade on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol ACCA, and with us is the CEO of the company, Rick Pertel. Rick, welcome to the show. Thank you, Everett. I'm happy to be here. You know, give my uh, listeners a little bit of background of yourself, a little bit about statement of your company, and then I want to get into the Q&A. Sure, sure. Um, well, we uh, we actually merged with uh, a, our private company, which was Mary J. F- um, Agricultural, merged with the Acacia family in January of 2016 and became a, a public entity in uh, January 16th. We uh, we started off here in Florida as one of the um, licensees and our applicants in the state of Florida. Started acquiring all of our equipment and. Uh, Everything we needed to um, to to be a licensed applicant here in Florida, and we ended up putting all that stuff into mobile applications and going to work because we just got a little tired of sitting around waiting for regulators to approve things. So that's kind of how we got our start here at Acacia. About myself, um, my background is uh, I was came moved to Florida about 30 years ago, and in the Chicago land areas where I was from. Um, in the restaurant and bar business there, worked for the city for approximately nine years when, before I moved to Florida. When I moved to Florida, I was in the insurance and financial sector, uh, grew up in that particular sector from the sales side all the way up to the vice president of the public company, and uh, retired from that organization in 2004, went into philanthropy work for several years, and from philanthropy work got into the, uh, the cannabis space. From um, from watching what it did to uh, particular people in terms of being patients as the medicinal values and seeing how that devastated or changed the devastation of people's lives is really what excited me to get involved with it full throttle. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, if you could give me the advantages of a vertically integrated hemp operations and exactly how do you guys make your money? The nice thing about being vertically integrated is you can build and control your own genetics um, through the growing cycle. Um, we see lots of different phenotypes, even from different uh, or the same types of clones. So that's a real important factor, having that control over the phenotypes and the genetics. The second is being able to process that particular material into medicinal oils. Um, so having the abilities and the structure to do uh, mobile or in this case we do uh, supercritical CO2 processing and then to man- be able to manufacture the end product into a retail type product or a wholesale type product. So uh, having that ability to grow, manufacture, process, and most importantly, have the retail distribution storefront is all part of the vertical grow. That is, um, that's exciting. We are in that particular space in Tennessee, and it allows us to um, be in complete control of our future as it relates to uh, pricing for our consumers and or um, our distributors. So it's, uh, it's a very uh, lucrative in terms of having that uh, ability. Hey, if you would explain to myself and my listeners, what kind of license do you need and what kind of license do you guys currently have? Well, in Tennessee, we have a, what's called a grower's license, and we are in the pilot program working with uh, one of the main universities there in Tennessee. So we have the pilot license that we've been um, licensed in the state of Tennessee now going on our third year. We have the processor's license so that we can actually process the uh, material that is grown on the farm and manufacture. Processing and manufacturing is one license. And then we also have our storefront, uh, the retail store, which is licensed um, and taxed <laughs> in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. So we have uh, the license to grow, the license to process and manufacture, and the license to retail. Uh, we also have our um, tax-exempt agricultural certificate, so we can kind of touch all the bases all the way around. You know, a lot of people uh, talk about growing from outside to growing inside. Why indoor versus outdoor growing is best for you guys? Well, and we, we, we made a conscious decision. I know it's a lot more costs to get set up initially with your um, indoor structures, whether it be uh, – air conditioning systems or lighting systems or proper uh, watering systems. So once you get your infrastructure structured, 
you have much more control over the insects um, or the whole overall environment, the insects, the uh, Mother Nature. We've seen what Mother Nature did with the hurricane here on the East Coast and took out a lot of crops in the South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia markets this past, uh, this past fall. So not having to deal with tornadoes, weather, rain, um, and all the Mother Nature throws at us, as well as the insects that are constantly being combated is a big, big uh, advantage. The second and probably the more important is that when you can control the environment, um, you can actually grow uh, pharmaceutical quality or medicinal grade products that, um, that you can certify. And that's, that's important um, when you start getting into treating people or trying to treat people or trying to put out, provide products that would be beneficial for people. Uh, and the third is, is the fact that you can grow year-round in climates. Um, in Tennessee, for example, the climate does get a little cold, and, and you can't grow out in those cold climates. So this gives us the ability, or you would have the ability on in an indoor to grow three or four or perhaps five or six cycles a year. So definitely more, much more lucrative on an indoor grow and certainly a lot more quality control. Acacia Diversified Holdings is the company that we're highlighting here today on Stock Day. You can find them on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol ACCA. And with us today, you've been listening to the CEO of the company, Rick Pertel. Rick, let me ask you this. How is your company preparing for the FDA oversight or approvals that come along with the industry that you're in? Well, that, that's a good question, Everett. We acquired a company called MetaHub not too long ago as a public entity. We acquired them. And, and what that gave us is the um, infrastructure to have what we call left-to-right HL7 HIPAA-compliant software technology, meaning that we could track traditionally the seed to the sale or what's going on in the genetics at the inside and or outside of any type of grow, but in our case inside, all the way through to the retail sale or wholesale sale. But most importantly, we also have the doctor-patient relationship built into this, this software where the doctor can sit down with a patient and prescribe um, certain types of um, medicinal value uh, hemp products, whether pick, he can pick it by genetic, he can pick it by different types of strain, he could tell us what type of oil carrier that we would be using in a manufactured product, how many refills, and allowing the physicians or the doctors to kind of navigate this uncharted water where we could determine or they can determine what type of strain works better for what type of potential ailment um, is what it's all about, collecting that data, keeping that data secure, and most importantly, giving that physician the ability to see everything down to when the seed was started and where it came from. So it, it really opens up the, um, as I say, left to right visibility of everything that we're doing, which then sets us up more importantly for for the FDA approvals. So we're really excited about having that technology, uh, owning the code in that company, and the ability to develop something that may be useful for others as much as it is for ourselves. But it's really uh, innovative, and we're really excited about getting that uh, up and running and showing the uh, regulators and the law enforcement and everybody else how we can track the products and treat it much like a controlled substance today. You know, I was talking uh, to some of my constituents the, the other day, as you know, the MJ Biz a marijuana conference is coming up or this week in uh, Las Vegas. And I was telling them that it's all about management and who you have on your team and, and board members. Obviously, you guys have created some new board members. Uh, tell us about your team a little bit. Well, we have um, we have Miss Kim Edwards. She was just premiered in the 420 Trailblazer magazine. Um, she is our COO, and she is uh, very much engaged in the um, the women movement in the cannabis industry as well. As she's got a huge network of people that she works with, and and um, and uh, conspires where cons uh, consults with, I should say, uh, on an ongoing basis. And Kim's been with the in the business as long as I have, which is going on our fifth year. We also have a gentleman by the name of Neil Golson. He comes from the financial sector. He's a certified financial planner. And um, he, he's um, somebody that I've known for a great deal of time and have a great amount of respect for. Mr. Gary Roberts is our Tennessee resident. He is also um, on the board of our uh, vertical in uh, Tennessee, which is Euphoria Medical of Tennessee, and on our uh, Acacia board. Gary is um, a, a vice president of a uh, huge financial or insurance company running several or multiple states and running different teams in those states. We've, we also have Danny Gibbs, which is the original founder from Gibbs Construction, which is what Acacia was uh, many years back. Danny is, uh, like I say, the original founder. His background is uh, commercial construction and real estate. 
And our most recent member is uh, Dr. Paula, Dr. Richard Paula. He is, um, Dr. Paula works very closely He's, uh, with the um, Shriners Group. He uh, reports directly to the CEO of Shriners Group and, um, and uh, has a medis- uh, medical background from working at Tampa General, the ER, as well as working as the Chief Medical uh, Information Officer at the Shriners. So we're pretty pleased with our board. We're, we are adding and looking to add some more talent um, from a scientist uh, standpoint, and we will as we continue to evolve. But uh, really exciting to be working with this group of people. They're, they're very talented, and uh, they, they're uh, very much engaged in what we're doing and keep feeding information to us as we continue to evolve. We're running out of time, but in closing here, Rick, what would you like my listeners to take away from this interview? Well, we are pr- we're very uh, Acacia's positioning itself for the long term. We are not real big in the isolate. Uh, we've manufactured it, but don't necessarily stand behind it as much as we do the whole plant synergistic effect that the medicinal values provide through uh, non non uh, plagiarizing out the plant. So the listens are, we're, we're in it for the long haul. We're going to take it slow. We're going to be here for the long haul, and we're going to continue to do things right and continue to do things that we can be proud of. One of our basic rules here is we won't sell anything that we won't put in our own mouths. So everything that we're selling is stuff that we believe in and that we use. So it's, uh, it's very important to us that, uh, that we continue that journey. Rick, I want to thank you for coming on the show today. It was a pleasure to have you on here. Hopefully you'll come back in 40 or 50 days. Give us an update of what's going on with your company, and I greatly appreciate for your time. Thanks, Everett. I'm happy that we took the time to, uh, to visit with each other, and thank you so much for the opportunity to share with your listeners a little bit about uh, Acacia Diversified Holdings, Inc. This program is entirely sponsored and produced by Uptick Newswire, LLC, which is responsible for the content. The opinions and information provided on this program are those of the guests and those of the respective companies they represent, and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff or management of Uptick Newswire. Uptick Newswire encourages all listeners of this program to do their due diligence and research when determining investment strategies that will work for them or to seek the assistance of an investment professional. The guests of this program may have paid for its distribution and are not directly affiliated with Uptick Newswire or the station.